So going back in time, what I'd say is I joined Blackstone in the early 90s. I worked in the M&A and private equity area. And the real estate market had collapsed, as you guys all know, and it was just starting to come back. And Pete and Steve had this idea to go into real estate, and they found John Schreiber, another Chicagoan, to start the business. And I got tapped on the shoulder, and they said, hey, do you, you know, we have some senior people, but we have nobody junior. Do you want to do this? Do a couple years, short tour of duty. And I said, sure. And that's how I got in the real estate business. And at the beginning, it was buying individual assets. I worked very closely with John Schreiber on $6 million shopping centers and $11 million hotels. And we were buying distress from banks and other financial institutions and insurance companies. And yeah, it was just buying things inexpensively, classic value-oriented real estate investing. And we rode that wave through most of the 90s, um, like others did. And then I'd say 9-11 came and that downturn. And I think really the tipping point, and we grew from very little capital at that point, maybe we had a billion dollars of capital. We noticed that interest rates had come down um, sharply and the commercial mortgage-backed securities market started to explode. And when we looked at public companies on the, stream, on the screen, and Blackstone as a private equity firm obviously would often do what were then called LBOs, we said the real estate on the screen is much cheaper. Wouldn't it be interesting if we took this new debt, CMBS debt, that we could use a lot of in large quantum and brought it over to start buying public companies? And we started doing that in 2004 and five and six and seven, and the business started to supersize and ultimately got to Hilton Hotels and Equity Office with Sam, where we were doing 26 and $39 billion deals. And we were taking advantage at that point of what we saw as a real market inefficiency. And then I'd say the next step in this journey, as we get to your strategic point, Peter, is the market collapses in the financial crisis. We're fortunate. We'd sold a bunch of real estate. We still had a lot of reserves in our funds. We liked what we owned. And we started going back into the market, buying all sorts of things. And really the tipping point was we began to identify that if there were themes that made sense, we should go all in and become high conviction investors. And part of that came from the Hilton experience, which is we bought this hotel company at the worst time in the world. Ultimately, we made $14 billion because it was a great company. We had a great leader in Chris Nassetta, and it was in a great sector, right? It had these brands, management franchise. And so we started looking for where could we deploy more capital in a high conviction way. And we stumbled on things like uh, global logistics, where we started out buying warehouses in the US and then saw what was happening in e-commerce and grew that to $100 billion of assets today in that space. IT parks in India, single family housing in the US and, and in places like Spain. And we started expanding more and more into, obviously further into Europe, into Asia, into core plus real estate, into debt. And we started to think more and more about real estate, not as in the individual deal or the individual home, but more the neighborhood. And that these big thematic changes were happening in the global economy and that we should use our scale to really go after things, find great management teams, put capital behind them and generate excess returns. And the key behind everything, of course, is we've delivered for customers now for 30 plus years and we've delivered 15% net returns and you know that success generates more capital and we've gotten to this enormous scale and it's been done as a huge team sport with amazingly talented people ken kaplan and kathleen mccarthy are running the business today doing an incredible job but it has been an evolution it did to your point peter start very small one off has always been grounded by great analysis but over time we've become more top down more thematic and that really drove the business at scale you know, it's, it's interesting, John, if I had a dollar for every time somebody said to me, you know, I want John Shriver's job. I mean, they have no idea how tireless and, and, and the hours that John put in to create what he created. Um, you know, it's, it's mind boggling. Uh, for, uh, for and, and, and by the way, beyond just being a great investor and somebody who cared, he, he cared about the investment results, but he cared about the people. And he right. really wanted us to have a tremendous culture. And so he right. trained people not only in the art of investing, 
how to discount cash flows, how to think about risk factors, but also in the art of being good human beings, how to treat counterparties in the right way, and as a result, how to build a great organization. And too often in finance, people just focus on that first part. But to build a great enduring institution, you need both pieces. And that's really key, and John really had that. 